So for this more advanced algorithm, um, I'm just going to kind of walk through the logic behind it and then show you my code. So again, if you're content with the more naive algorithm and you got it working and it can do checkmate and all that good stuff, then you can feel free to uh, skip the rest of this video and move on to the next one. Um, but I do want to show this particular video. Um, it's it's a little bit different than the implementation. I still haven't put in the uh, checkmate variable uh, and stalemate variables, so I, I do need to add those to to make it the the same as the other um, version of this. But you'll notice there's some things that I've definitely done different. So let me first just explain the algorithm. So in, a, in the naive algorithm, in order to figure out if a piece was in check, we basically just looked to see if, uh, the, if any of the pieces could attack uh, the king. So for example, here we just said, OK, it's white's turn to move. Um, this is a valid move because it blocks the check from the bishop. Well, how did it know that the bishop could check? So basically what it did is it generated all of White's possible moves, including moving the bishop even to like this square here. And then what it did after, so it made that move and it said, okay, we're going to make this move. We're going to put the bishop here and then we're going to generate all of Black's moves, including all his pawn moves, including the captures. And we're going to see if any of those possible moves attack the king, which obviously there's one move that does. And so it's going to do that when I move the bishop here. It's going to do that when I move the bishop here. It's going to do that when I move the bishop here. So you can see that it's generating the black moves over and over and over and over again to find one check. And you can see the inefficiency. It was pretty easy to implement, a little bit complicated, but not too bad. The algorithm was easy to follow. Oftentimes, the easier an algorithm is to implement, not, not all the time, I won't say this is the general rule, but a lot of the times, the more naive solutions that are kind of brute force things are not as efficient as the more complicated or, or, uh, algorithms. And so what this algorithm does is, and, and maybe you can kind of guess what this algorithm might, this other a better version of this algorithm might be. Instead of thinking about all of Black's moves, Let's just think about the king, the white king, and all the squares that can attack him, assuming white to move. So assuming white to move here, we're going to look at the king, and we're going to basically think about the lines that, this, that can attack this king. So I'm just going to kind of move my king to the center so I can explain what I mean by that. All right. So let's say that I have the king in a location like this. And a couple pieces around. So, all right. So let's say I have something like a position like this, and it's white's turn to move. So what I have to, what I have to determine here is, is the, is the king in check? And, and in order to do that, what I, what I have to do is I have to look and see. From each of the lines going out from the king, you can imagine the four orthogonal lines and the four diagonal lines, that, that little asterisk that's coming out of the king. For each of those lines, I have to see if there's a black piece that's attacking my white king or a white piece attacking my black king. So here, the queen obviously is attacking the king. And so what my algorithm would do is it would first check all the horizontals and all the verticals and then check all the diagonals. And it would look for um, a piece that's attacking. So here, it, let's, let's say we're starting with the up direction. So the, the algorithm here would check to see, do, OK, is there a piece here? Yes. Is it an allied piece? No. Is it an enemy piece that can attack me? And in this case, the answer is no. All right, and so I don't need to worry about checking any of these squares because if there's a, if let's say the black queen was here instead, then this this uh, black queen doesn't do anything because there's a black piece here, so I'm fine. Um, now, it would do that for each of the directions, and if it runs into a white piece, 
then what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, this white piece is providing me cover from any piece that would be beyond it. Um, and this is where we could end up with something called a pin. So let's just say, for example, that while there moves here, um, this is move my one here, and then I have this piece here. Okay. So now um, what this looks like is is this black pawn. I would I would kind of look beyond it and I would see a pawn here. Now this pawn cannot attack the king if that pawn were not in the way. So it can't attack diagonally because it's not a bishop or a queen. And so I don't have to worry about this piece. This piece is no threat. But the queen can obviously attack here. And if this pawn were not here, it would be checked. So this is what we call a pin. And so the idea is now this pawn cannot move. And so my algorithm not only looks for pieces that are putting it in check, but also looks for pins. Um, okay, so that moving the pawn forward is not a valid move, but capturing the queen obviously is a valid move because it, this doesn't result in it in check. So your algorithm is going to look for, this more complicated algorithm is going to look for moves where the king can move and attack a piece, let's say like capturing this pawn in front of him. Where he's not no longer in attack in under attack from any any line, um, but it's also going to keep track of the squares that are pinned, so those pieces cannot move. The only time the king is forced to move is if it's in check. Let's say, for example, something like this, where it's in check, and uh, that check cannot be blocked. So, for example, I can block the check here by moving the knight. Um, but let's say that my knight wasn't there, um, and now the queen comes to here. Now I have to move my king either here or here to avoid the check. So those are the only valid moves for it, or I have to capture that attacking piece. So that's what you want to think about um, in terms of this algorithm. Start at the king, and let's look for lines that attack it. All right, the other thing you're going to have to watch out for is knights, because knights are a little bit different. So um, black can move. So if uh, black, for example, moves the knight here, now I I can't, um, this knight is putting in, in, in check. I don't have to worry about, like, obviously that's not one of the fours on our or diagonal, so I'd have to look at the eight squares that a knight could potentially be attacking and see if any knight is there. And that's another way that I could be in check. In that case, you'd have to move the king because you can't block a knight's check. You'd either have to capture or you'd have to um, move the king. And so uh, those are those are some of the ideas here. All right. So um, hopefully that that idea of the algorithm makes sense. Um, I might have just thought, yeah, I can capture that piece or move away. Um, and, and that's the idea. So the only time that the king has to move, is required in the game to move, is in the situation of something we call a double check. This is a situation where we have a double check. Uh, black moves their knight to this square here. And so what you can see here is that the king is under attack by two pieces. It's in check by two pieces. It's not. It's in check by the knight here, and it's also in check by the king, uh, by the queen here. In the situation of a double check. So when you're, you check for all the pieces that are putting the king in check and you find that there's two pieces putting it in check, then the king has to move. And so that that's your solution. So that, that's the third part of the algorithm. So the first part is to see if any pieces are in check. The second is to see if any pieces are pinning another piece. And then the third is to see if there's a double check. And that's kind of what this algorithm goes through. Um, so, so let's... let's um, Let's look at how we can accomplish this. So a similar thing, I have a I keep track of my white and black king location, but I have three variables here. I have in check, which means if the current player is in check, that that variable will be true. Um, and I have a list of all the pins that are current and all the checks that are current. So any piece that's putting another piece in check, any piece that's being pinned, will be in a list. And I'll show what the, these lists are later. And we're going to use those lists in our move functions. To make sure that we're not moving a piece that's pinned out of the line of a pin, and that if the king is in check, then we do take care of that. 
Um, I still, like I said, I still need to add checkmate and stalemate to make this similar to the earlier part in this video, but we'll get there. Um, so what do we got? The uh, make move and, and undo move are very similar. I don't think I've changed those at all. But where where this is going to look different is in the valid moves here. So this this is going to be a lot different. So instead of just generating all the possible moves initially, what I first do is I actually check for any pins and checks. So the first thing I do is I check to see if the king is in check, see if there are any pins and there are any checks. And I actually have written a, a helper function for this. So I'm going to go through that function first. And it's a pretty complicated one, but it plays off of the piece moves. So let's take a look at this check for pins and checks method. Um, here I'm just setting a few variables up. So I have my pins, my checks, my in check. These are just variables similar to the fields that I had up here. So I, I am going to eventually set these um, later on, but I think this is useful information to have when we call this function. Uh, and then here I'm looking at if it's white's to move, then black is the enemy and white is the ally color. And if it's uh, black to move, then the enemy color is white and the ally color is black. Um, so you're, you're looking at, uh, the, the correct colors when you're, when you're doing this start row and start column. And, and we're, we're starting from the King's location in both situations. And this is the idea behind the algorithm. Start at the King and work your way out. Here we're working out in all the directions, um, by row and by column. And, and so here we have the four rook directions, the four bishop directions, all the queen directions. So go through each of the directions. Uh, here I have a variable called possible pin, which you, you, in order to know if a piece is a pin, you need to keep track of it when you run into it. But then you also need to look beyond it and make sure that there's no piece that's attacking that pin and going through that. And so here um, we're going to go through each of the directions and we're just going to get the end row and end column. So basically a square that's I away from the king in a given direction. Just looking radially outward. Okay. Make sure that square is on the board, as always. And let's see if there's a piece there. If, if there is a piece there and it's an ally color, then this has the potential to be a pin. So we save this square in this variable called possible pin, as well as the direction. Because a, a pawn could be a pin or a, or a rook could be a pin, or whatever, whatever piece could be a pin. If it's the first piece that's between an enemy piece and your your king, so that's what this this does. If it's the second piece, though, so let's say for example um, that you know I have let's say I just move this pawn here, and now I'm checking for for pins uh, along let's say the queen is here, right? So I'm, I'm checking for whites uh, for whites in check here and i'm checking for possible pins i hit an allied piece so this could potentially be a pin but since i have a second allied piece in that same direction outward this is no longer a pin and it's also not possible to have a check in that direction so we basically break that but if um if instead i you know move the knight out first and then you know move a different piece and then the the queen came out here now this piece is a pin because beyond it is a black piece. Um, so it's pinning that pawn. That pawn can't move or the king would be in check. So once you get to a second allied piece, you can break out of that direction. You don't need to check beyond that second allied piece. Now, what happens if you hit an enemy piece? So let's say we look at this end piece and it has the enemy color. Well, let's look at what type of piece it is, because depending on what type of piece it is depends on how you can react to this. And I've broken this into five cases, five potential pieces that can uh, cause check. The first is it's orthogonally away from the king and the piece is a rook. Uh, so let's just say, for example, um, we're going away from the king here, the black king, and we find this white rook. This Pawn would be pinned, meaning um, if you wanted to capture this pawn, the white pawn with the black pawn here, it's not allowed. You could still move it forward, 
doesn't break the pin, but you can't you can't move it to the side to capture because then your king would be exposed. So that's that's the idea behind this first part. I'm looking radially out for word from the king. I find an enemy piece and I'm I'm going orthogonally and that piece is rook. Okay. The second condition is diagonally away from the king and the piece is a bishop. So similar idea here. Um but now crap all my pieces in. Now I have a bishop here. So now I'm looking out this diagonal and this pawn is also pinned. Can't move it because the bishop here is on this diagonal. So now again, if I have two in a row, this this doesn't become a pin anymore. And you know, I can I can move this piece just fine. Now that that's a pin, but this one's not pinned. And I, I can move either one. Obviously, can't move them both, but I can move one or the other. Uh, and then the third pin would be, or the third case that I'm going to look at is di is diagonally away from the square, but the piece happens to be a pawn, so it has to be one away from it. So the only reason a pawn could put your king in check uh, is, let's say, the pawn is here. This would now apply a check to this piece, and I couldn't capture it because the rook's guarding it. Capture another piece, that'd be a valid move, or I could move out of the way of the check. But I can't capture that piece. So um, that's the third case. So we've looked at rooks, bishops, and uh, pawns. The fourth case would be any direction, and the piece is a queen. So let's say. Um, if I move this here, and then now eh. okay, so now this piece would be pinned by the queen, right? And and so it's any direction. Um, and that would obviously also cause check. So um, if, for example, in this situation, I can't move the queen because the queen is pinned, capture, and I can move along that diagonal as well. So that's that's the fourth case. Uh, and then the fifth case is any direction one square away, and this is a king. So this is to prevent kings being attacked by another king. So when your kings get close to each other, um, this king attacks the three squares in front of it. If I had my opposing king here, it would attack those three squares. Neither king can enter those three squares. All right, so that, that's the five cases I have. The other case is the knight, but that's kind of done separately. Knights move differently. <laughs> so um, how do I how do I check all these? Th these conditionals get a little bit complicated, but basically I'm looking for the rook directions, so j zero to three, all the orthogonal directions and the pieces of rook, all the bishop directions and the pieces of bishop, or the pieces just a queen. That's that's one condition, or the pieces a king and it's one away. The, I saved the pawn one for last. The pawn being one square away is is a little bit weird. So you need the pawn to be one square away, i equals one, just like the king here. But you also need to check to see if the color is the right in order to determine the direction. Because um, obviously um, white pawns can only advance and attack in one direction. Black pawns can only advance and attack in another direction. So here our enemy color was six and seven. Uh, if our enemy color is white, black pawns follow the directions of six and seven uh, to capture. Um, they they move in the positive rows, right? They're moving down the board, so they're increasing their rows, capturing left and right. And if the enemy piece is is uh, is black, then you're looking at four and five. So, uh, yeah, so that's what that long complicated if statement does. So if any if the enemy piece happens in any of those conditions. And notice that even though this is a pretty complex conditional, this is still much faster than generating all the possible moves. Here I'm just type checking, I'm just comparing variables. There's not, there's just this for loop here, which 
isn't that expensive. Um, I've got eight potential directions, eight potential. So the max uh, times this is going to run is 64, but a lot of times it's going to break early um, when I hit a second pin or, or you know, don't get to the end of the board because I, I go off the board here. So. Um, actually, I should put an else break in here for the off board. Because there's no point in continuing to check in that direction if the first time you check it, it's off the board. Anyway, what, what's after that? Well, if there was no piece blocking it, then this means it's in check. So we set in check to true, and we append that row and column to our checks list. And then we break. Once we find a check, we can't find any more checks in that direction. The other possibility is that there was a pin. So this isn't a check, but this would be a pin. So we would say pins append that possible pin, which we have saved here. And then we break from there. The other case, it's this enemy piece, but it's not applying check. So let's say, for example, that we hit a knight, or we hit a pawn that's more than one square away, uh, or we hit a rook along a diagonal, or we hit a bishop along a orthogonal direction. Those pieces don't apply check. And so, and, and they also act as a, as a barrier for any pieces that are behind it so we can break it that point as well. Okay, then finally we do the knight moves. So we're gonna look basically at all the knight moves away from the king, see if they're on the board. If they're on the board, we're gonna check to see if it's an enemy, enemy uh, piece attacking it. If it is, and that piece is a knight, then that means the king is in check. We can append that as the check. And then finally I return in check, pins in check. This is this is the heart of the algorithm, but basically when this method is called, we're going to generate a list of all the pieces that are pinned, all the pieces that or all the squares that are causing a check, and whether or not uh, the king is currently in check. So now, what what do I do with that information? So now my give valid moves is going to look a little bit different. So first thing I do is I call this function. Then what I do is just get which king I'm going to be looking at. Um, I, I use this king row and king column uh, later on, so you'll see where I use this. So I'm just setting it right here. Uh, then basically what I do is I have three ca cases. The first is if the, if the king is in check, then this is one situation that we have to look at. If the king's not in check, then all the moves should be valid minus ones that deal with pins, but we'll actually get to that. So I'm just generating all the possible moves and returning. So this is when it's not in check. The other two cases are if it's in check, but it's only one check. And then the, the other case, the third case would be it's a double check. If it's a double check, there's two pieces that are attacking it like I showed, then the king has to move. Then all you need to actually do is get the king moves. And that's where the king King row, king column comes in. We append those. So those are kind of my three cases. Now I'm going to look at this first case, which I glossed over, which is when you're in check. When you're in check by one piece, your basic moves are I can block the check or I can capture the piece. So let's generate our possible moves and let's see how many of them block the piece. And so the, the idea here is um, this is the information about the check. That, that I stored, if you, you'll recall, um, the check information was uh, right here. We, we have the end row and end column. So basically where the piece is and what direction it was away from the king. Remember, we're going away from the king. Uh, if, that's, that's a good point um, also. We're going away from the king, which is why um, you, you might have looked at this and, and and thought about this, and this might have been confusing. It actually tripped me up for a little bit. Um, why, why, if the enemy color is the white pawns, why am I using uh, six and seven? Because white pawns are, are supposed to move up the board. They should be moving in a negative direction. Well, it's from the perspective of the black king. And so they're moving toward the black king. So that, that's why um, it, it, would, it would be moving down the board from the black king toward the white pieces. That's why these, these are switched a little bit. So in, in case you were wondering. 
Um, but anyway, so so here we grab the check information, which just tells us which we're going to see which enemy piece is checked. It's causing the check. And we're going to store that in a variable called piece checking. Uh, and then we are going to get the valid squares. So these are squares that pieces can move to. The only valid squares are the moves that can block the check. Obviously, if it's a knight, we must capture the knight or move the king. Other pieces can be blocked. So if the piece checking is a knight, the, the only valid square that a piece can move to is where the knight is, namely this check row check column. But if the piece is another type, then we can block the check. And so what, what I do here is starting from the king again, starting from the king's row and king column, we're going to move in the direction away from the king using our check two and check three information times i. And we're just going to keep adding valid squares. So I can move to any square between the king and the attacking piece, or I can move to the attacking piece. And, and then once I get to the attacking piece, then I can break my, my loop. There's no more valid squares. And so this just generates basically a list of coordinates where a piece can move to in order to block the check. And that's really the, the, the root of this algorithm. So instead of generating all of Black's moves and seeing, am, am I under attack from any of them? This is saying, starting from the king, is there any piece attacking? Yes, this piece is attacking. Okay, then that means out of all of my possible moves, the only ones that are going to be valid are the ones that block that move. All right, and so now we want to um, go again, go through the list backwards. I talked about that earlier, uh, and see if the piece moved was uh, not the king, then that means that piece has to move to one of the valid squares. So if we're not moving the king, then it has to move to one of the valid squares, i.e., it has to block it or capture. Um, and if it doesn't do that, so if it's not a king move and it doesn't block or capture, then we should remove it. Now, you might be thinking, well, what about a king move that ends up in check? Well, I do take care of it. And that's kind of the last part of this, of this piece and, and the idea behind all the pins. So at this point, just, just with this point of the algorithm, we now will be able to find checks and we'll be able to move uh, pieces to block check. But if you don't do anything about the pins, your engine will still allow you to move pieces that are pinned and allow you to put your king in check. And so that's where we have to finally do the last implementation here, which is this uh, piece pinned uh, here. And so you'll, you'll notice I'm actually doing this in all of the, I've, I've modified the pawn move, the rook moves, all of these things to do a couple different so here I check the pin piece in the direction and set it. So I'm going through the list of pins. And I'm just seeing uh, the list of pin pieces, and I'm seeing if that, if the piece that I'm currently looking at, the pawn I'm currently looking at, is actually a pin piece. If it is, I set this variable to true, and I save the direction at which it's, it's being pinned from. Um, and then I remove it from the list of pins. And you'll see I do that with the rooks as well, and I'll, I'll kind of go through this. But the, the idea here is I'm just getting information about the pin itself so that later on I can say here for like the one square move, before I append the one square move, I have to make sure that that piece is not pinned um, or the, the pin direction is in the, in the direction that the piece wants to move. So if the pin direction is is in the direction where the piece wants to move, then it's fine. I can move that. I can move that pawn just just fine. Um, moving obviously moving away from said king. Um, so that that's what this this little if statement. That's all I had to add in here, and that'll work for both the one and two square. Capture is very similar if the piece is not pinned or the pin direction is in the diagonal, negative one, negative one, or negative one, the direction that piece is going. If it's going in the direction of the pin, then that's actually fine as well. And I can um, do that move. But if it's, uh, you know, if it's pinned in the direction of like negative one, zero, 
as in like a rook or a, or a queen is pinning it from an orthogonal direction, then I won't be able to capture the side. Uh, and then similar idea, black pawn moves. The only difference is switching negative signs here to uh, positive positive one, negative one instead of <clears throat> excuse me. All right, so I know that's that's a lot. Um the the logic here, again, this is a really this is why I just wanted to show you this. And um it's 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 an interesting way of doing it. Uh let's let's look at the other one. So rook move again, the pin direction here, just grabbing it. Uh, I actually have to add in this line of code here. This was a bug that came up. Uh, if it's a queen, you don't. Oops. If it's a queen, you don't want to remove it from the list when you go through the rook moves, since our queen moves generate rook moves. If we remove the queen from the pin list, but it's pinned by a in in terms of like a bishop, then it'll allow you to move the queen out of that pin. So that, that's what this extra line of code is for this. Um, but same idea, see if the rook that we're moving is pinned, or the queen that we're moving is pinned. And then if it is, just simply add this line of code. Here. So if the piece is not pinned or the pin direction is in the direction or the opposite direction. This is, this is a little bit confusing why you have to add in this negative direction. The idea here, and I can show you with bishops a little bit faster. Uh, the idea here is, let's say here, here. Now this bishop is pinned by this bishop. So obviously I can capture it and that's valid. Or I can move toward it and that's perfectly valid as well. But I can't move out of this. Um, so I need to be able to actually allow uh, the piece to move not only toward the pin, but also away from the pin as well. And that's Similar for a rook, you have to be able to move toward it or away from it, and so that's why I have to add it this negative direction. All right, um, but that's the only thing you have to add for that. Just check if it's a pin piece, and then if it is, then you can go on with your move. Knights very similar, but we're not concerned about the direction as much. We don't actually use that. Actually, take that out uh, because the the pin direction doesn't actually matter for a knight. The knight's pinned. Um, if it's being pinned along a, a diagonal by a piece, you can't capture that piece. Uh, it's impossible. And if it's being uh, pinned orthogonally, you can't capture that piece either. And that's because um, of, of this idea, that the, the way the knight moves. Always moves two and one, which means it can't be pinned. If if it's pinned diagonally, then it can't capture that piece. Um, so, uh, so here we're just looking to see if the piece is not. Pinned. All right, and then bishop, very similar to rook. Uh, see if the see if the bishop is pinned, and again, check to see what direction it's pinned from. And then finally, uh, the king moves. The king moves are a little bit weird, and you have to actually do a lot with this to, to make the king moves work. We have to add in this whole idea now that after we make a king move, we actually have to make sure that the king is not in check. So here what I do, generate all the king moves like I was doing before. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say, Okay, so let's let's say this is a valid move. Everything everything above this is the same. But here's where it comes in different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first grab the king's location. Or, or sorry, I'm going to change the king's location. If it's white's turn, then I'm going to change the king's location to end row column. And if it's black's turn, I'm going to change the black king's location to end row and column. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's temporarily move the king to that location. And then let's go ahead and run the check for check for pins and checks again. We did before. 
And so I'm going to move, I'm going to move it. And then I'm going to check for pins. And if it's not in check, then that means that that king move is fine. So I'm, I'm, I'm not in check. And if it's in check, then that move is not fine. So I shouldn't append. And that's, that's really the only difference here. So you do have to run your in check uh, algorithm on the eight potential king moves. But still better than generating all of black keys. Uh, and then obviously we want to make sure that we set the king's location back to, to north. And there's also um, one little thing that I wanted to fix here um, that I just realized would be a problem with this checker pins and checks method, which is um, we actually need to add in this as well. When we're checking to see if it's an ally piece, we need to make sure that the piece we're looking at is not the king itself. Um, and this seems a little bit weird, but it's the fact that because we're calling get king moves without actually moving the king, there's sort of like a phantom king. So uh, that's that's what I, I didn't have this in the original um, part of this video, but I just wanted to edit this on to the end. Um, so if you notice when you're cop if you were copying the code and you see that this looks different, um, just wanted to add that correction in. So the what this fixes. So let's say I take this out. Um, the problem with this because we're using the uh, get possible moves in check. So let's say for example, uh, move my queen king out here, block it move and move the king here um and and then let's say the queen captures here uh it will actually allow me to do this move which is an invalid move obviously i can't move the king along this diagonal but the reason why it allowed this is because when it's when you're generating the king moves um what it does is basically we change the king's location we change the king's location to this square here and say, okay, from this square, let's look out in each direction. And the, the there's so this is the phantom king here, and this is the real king. And so the phantom king, when it's generating the king moves, is actually um, being like protected by the real king. Obviously, that can't happen. Uh, and so if you if you notice this happening, when uh, hey, how come I have this bug in my code? Like I shouldn't be able to do that. Well just add in this this little fix right here um and piece one does not equal king we want to make sure that our allied piece that that we're uh looking at is not a king because if it's, if it's a king then that, that's, that's just happens because we're calling that from uh the in check function um so now you can hopefully see that So it should work here, here, uh, this guy here. And now, okay, so now if I move this here, I cannot move back to that square. I can move here, um, or I can capture, but it won't let me back to that square. And that's what we wanted. So, all right, so that's the entirety of the algorithm. And it's implemented in the same way uh, in terms of, you know, we don't have to change anything here. So it's just a way of generating moves. Uh, and so that that's it. Again, this is a pretty, a lot more complicated way of doing it, but it is more efficient. And so uh, if you wanted to implement it this way, hopefully uh, I gave you enough time in the video to pause and look at the code and copy it down if you wanted to do that. But uh yeah, thanks for uh, sticking around for this part of the video. Um, I know that was a lot, uh, but I hope I hope it was informative and enjoyable. Um, so we'll continue this video series uh, next with uh, some of the castling and on passant and pawn promotions, a few of the other rules, and then our engine will basically be done, and then it'll all be just uh, some UI improvements and then adding an AI so we can play against the computer. All right. Uh, thanks again. I will uh, talk to you guys soon.